Hey third graders, today is Thursday, June 4th, and we are back with some more of our number line work for this section of Number Corner. Now, I, unfortunately, there are no more games to play Put It On The Line, so we won't be able to challenge Miss Musto anymore, but what I wanted to show you was how can we put it on the line? If we are given a fraction and we don't know, how do I do that? Say you have a fraction and you need to compare two fractions to see which is more or which is less. Like Ms. Musto and I needed to see which were more or less to see who scored more points. And you just have this big old blank fraction and you think, I don't know how to do that. What am I going to do? Well, let's take a look and see if we can figure it out. Okay? So, first of all, I'm going to say to myself, let's take a look at the number line that's up here. So, it was a big blank number line, and then I decided to save us some time. What if I had, was given fractions in 12s? So, all I would do is I would take from my 0 to 1, and I would need to make sure I have 12 jumps as evenly spaced as I can. So to do that, I started right in the middle because I know half of 12 is 6. So this would be 6 twelfths. And then to help a little more, I kind of eyeballed it and I did half of this because half of 6 is 3. So I did 3 twelfths. And then since I know that halfway between 6 and 12 is 9, I did my halfway mark here and I did 9 twelfths. So that means this obviously is 12 twelfths. As I go, I can fill in these empty marks, right? So I would have 1 twelfth, 2 twelfths, oh, 3 twelfths, 4 twelfths, 5 twelfths, 6 twelfths, 7 twelfths, 8 twelfths, 9 twelfths, 10 twelfths, and 11 twelfths. That is a lot of twelfths. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is if you are given a fraction that has a different denominator, it is not twelfths, but you still need to compare at your fractions and see which one's more, which one's less, where would it be on this number line? Where would it go? So what you can do is a couple of things. One thing is you could draw a number line right under it. So let's say someone said, okay, um, uh, the answer to my problem is half, but I don't see half up here. So what can I do to see where it is comparing itself to 12? So what I could do is I could put a zero and I could put a one. And I can say, okay, I know that half means that in the fraction that means there's two parts. So all I have to do is split this big number line into two equal parts. So I look, I say, okay, that's about equal. So here is a half. So if I want to compare a half to my twelfths, I just look and see what lines up. Okay, so this you kind of have to be very neat with lining these up. So six twelfths is equal to one half, all right? So let's try another one. And if you have a paper and some, a pencil or a whiteboard, this would be a great time to uh, maybe pause and try this for our next uh, set of fractions that I'm going to give you. So then that way you could draw the twelfths and then you could draw what I'm going to tell you. So if you need to, take a pause so you can get caught up with us, okay? All right, so the next thing I'm going to ask is if I had fourths, how can I compare the twelfths and the fourths? So what I'm going to say is, let's take this line and split it into four equal parts. Well, the first thing that I would do is, okay, I would say half of four is two. So right in the middle, I know I have two fourths, right? So before two fourths, I know I must have one fourth. So I'm going to put it right in the middle point. And then over here, I know that after two fourths, it's got to be three fourths, right? Okay, so I'm going to put it right over here. So if I'm asking what 
fourths are equivalent to twelfths, I can take a look and say, and then I can test it because we, were, we learned about simplified fractions. Well, let's start here. So here I look and it looks like three twelfths and one fourth line up. One fourth equals three twelfths. Well, let's see if that's true. Is there something, remember I can multiply the top and the bottom by and I should get the same, it should work, okay? So let's see if it works. So I know one times what is three, three. One times three equals three, oh good. And then over here, four times three, is it 12? Yes, it is. So these are correct, yay. All right, so let's try how many fourths are equivalent to six twelfths? Well, let's take a look. Okay, so we're gonna say two fourths and six twelfths, they seem to line up, but let's see if this works. Is two times anything six? Yes, we know it's three. Two times three is six. Is four times three twelve? Yes, it works. So that's excellent. All right, so I know from looking at this, three twelfths is equal to one fourth, six twelfths is equal to two fourths. All right, so now I have my three fourths. I'm looking at it and I am like, uh oh, I'm not sure I drew it very well. I'm not sure if it's the eight twelfths or the nine twelfths. It's kind of in between. So let's test it, okay? So we're going to say three fourths is equal to eight twelfths, right? Okay, so I know four times three is 12, so that works. And three times three is, it's not eight. So this does not work. These are not equivalent to each other. That did not work out for us. So maybe let's try the nine twelfths and see what happens. So let's see. So we said four times three equals 12. Mm -hmm. And then is three times three nine? It is. So nine twelfths and three fourths are equivalent to each other. Yay. All right, so that's how we do it with our fourths, okay? When Ms. Lester and I were working, we also had some six in there. So, okay, if you have a whiteboard, you can erase the fourths, I go to the next one. I'm sorry, draw a new one. Or if you were doing on paper and pencil, you can just draw another number line underneath of that, like, like down here, underneath of the one we just did. I'm gonna keep mine up here though so you guys can see a little bit better. All right, so if we are in six, that means we need to take from zero to one whole and split it into six equal parts. So once again, for spacing, I say, can I split six in half? Yes, I know that half of six is three. So right in the middle, I know that I will have three six, okay? So I know before three, I have one and two. So this is gonna be one six, and this must be two six, okay? So let's see if we can figure out what how many twelfths are equivalent to these six? Okay, so one six, I'm saying I think it lines up with two twelfths. Let's see if that works. Is one six equivalent to two twelfths? Well, one times what is two? One times two is two. Yay, so is six times two twelve? It is, so yay, that works. All right, so now I'm gonna say, Two six, uh-oh, I can't tell if it's three twelfths or four twelfths. So I'm gonna try it out. So I'm gonna say two six is equal to blank twelfths. You know what? I'm just gonna do this. Six times what is 12? Six plus six, two, right? Two six is 12. So that means up here I need to times two also. What is two times two? So, 2 6 is actually equivalent to 4 twelfths. All right, let's test out our next one. 3 6. That lines right up with 6 twelfths. Hey, isn't 6 half of 12? 
Isn't three half of six? Yes. Oh, good. We don't even have to check it. All right, so your challenge, your question is two. I'm going to give you two problems today. So you're going to tell me what goes in here. You're going to tell me how many twelfths, that's hard to say, are equivalent to four, six, and five, six. So you're going to have to figure out how many twelfths are equivalent to four, six, and five, six. So what is going to go there and there? So you can take a look and try to eyeball my number line, but it would be a lot better if you drew your own and then if you double checked it with a multiplied numerator and the denominator by the same thing to see if it works. All right, make sure you leave your comments and your answers in the comments and post it to your Google Classroom. All right, I will see you tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye.